Hi. First thing we need to do is go to the Black Magic Design website and download the software for DaVinci Resolve 20. Now, for convenience purposes, I've actually created a shortcut on the desktop here. But what I'll also do is create a link in the description of this video so you can uh, go to it yourself directly. So if we open up the shortcut, if we uh, scroll down a little way, uh, we have two downloads. One is DaVinci Resolve Studio, and that's the paid version, and it's currently priced at $295. That works out about 255 GB pounds. Now the thing about that is it's a, it's a one-off payment. Once you uh, have paid for that, you get updates for life. So it's a lifetime subscription for that money. Now the second download is actually a free version. And it actually has about 85% of the functionality of the paid version. Which is fantastic. Especially if you're starting out, you've never done any editing before. You don't really need any more than that. For a starter, someone's just getting into it, the free version is absolutely fantastic. So what we're going to do is click on the free download icon. And we're presented with four downloads for each version, obviously depending on what your operating system is. And for this purpose, we're going to download the Windows version because I'm uh, working from a PC. And you have to fill in the um, registration and then click register and download. And before we install our download, we need to have in place an area where we're going to put all our raw footage. So basically you'll go out for the day, you do your filming, you'll come back, and then you upload from your camera to your computer in a specific area. Um, I've got an area here that I've created and it's called raw camera footage and media. And if I open it up, it actually contains, this is a mock-up, it actually contains four folders. So each time I've been out, I've, I've come back and created a folder of where I've been. And then I've uploaded all of the uh, video footage into that folder. And it just keeps it, it just keeps it tidy. So now we'll click on the uh, DaVinci Resolve 20 icon and open it up. And it actually starts at this page, which is your project management page. Basically, any projects that you're working on, uh, once you start working on them, create them, you will be left with an icon here, like a shortcut, basically. It means that if you get partway through a project and then have to stop, when you close it off, it updates the icon. And then when you come back next time, you click on, double click on the icon and it will bring you back to exactly where you left off last time, which is great because you don't have to be scratching your head thinking, oh, where was I? So first what we want to do here is create a new project. So new project. And we'll call this Plumber Park Chapel. One, and we'll click create. And we open up the interface and here is our Cumber Park Chapel One project. Don't be put off by all the icons. For our purposes, we'll only be looking at a few of them for now. So the interface is made up of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven areas. But for our purposes, it's just starting out, we're just going to look at two. We don't need to look at the others. I'll explain the functionality of those as we come to them later on in the series. The two areas that we're going to be looking at are media, and that's the interface for arranging all 
all the media you have for this particular project and edit. And that's the actual editing interface for actually knitting your videos together, chopping them up, adding effects on various other bits of jobs. They're the two areas that we're going to be looking at. Now, as we're starting a new project, first thing we really need to do is if you go up to File and go to Project Settings. Now in there are some uh, details about your actual footage that you've got that you're going to be using. Um, now I've filmed in 4K resolution at 50 frames a second when you're moving the camera about because it's 50 frames a second rather than 20 or 25 or 30. There's less blurring as you move it, which I quite like. So I try to do all of my footage 4K 50. But it doesn't matter, you know, whatever you're happy to uh, film at, you know, it doesn't really matter too much. As long as that you keep all your footage or try to keep all of your footage the same. When you start mixing resolutions and frame rates, it can be a little bit messy. You might find if you're filming in different frame rates, it might skip frames and then you get a little bit of juddering. In your video so to avoid any of that just uh, for best practices just try and keep your raw footage as you're filming it to a specific resolution and a specific frame rate now for me i choose um 4k as i say so i'm going to go down here and choose 4k that's ultra hd and I film in 50 frames per second. And we'll just alter the next one down as well. And the next thing we have to consider is the proxy media format. You don't really have to worry too much about what that is, it, that is but for more compatibility, I usually change it to h264 and that's what i film at so just just for that proxy media format and that's everything so we save that and now we're ready to uh, get going with our uh, our raw footage so what we're wanting to do is to import all of our raw footage into the project into a container that we call a bin and it's from that bin that you can choose which pieces of video you want to uh, work on or will become evident as we go on so what we're going to do is click on our media interface and here here we're going to create um, the storage area for this specific project so over here you see master so what we're going to do is right click and new bin and we will call this plumber art Chapel. And inside Plumber Park Chapel, we're going to put another bin. And we're going to call that Video. And open that up. And when you open it up, it's this area that it's looking at. So, what we want to do now is to go to where our footage is. And what we're going to do is find our folder where we keep our footage in and if we go to C uh, there is raw camera footage and media so we click on that as you can see we've got our four areas uh, that we saw earlier in the shortcut on the desktop and it's the Clumber Park Chapel that we're going to be looking at because that's where uh, that's where we've been and that is the footage that we're going to work on today so if we click on that here are our five little video clips. So uh, once we've located our files, our videos that we're going to be using, what we do is highlight them all, and then we drag them into our project folder. Now, when you actually do that, it's not actually moving your raw footage. It's actually creating kind of like shortcuts. So when you start manipulating 
uh, these in the interfaces, you're not actually working on the raw footage. So whatever you do here, at any point in, in, in your project, it never actually affects your raw footage. So don't worry that you're going to be damaging your, your precious uh, raw footage that you've, you've painstakingly gone out and taken. Uh, don't worry about it. If you go wrong and you want to start again, you know, your, your raw footage is exactly as it was. So, for instance, I can highlight this and just delete them all, delete them on the keyboard, and they're gone. But our raw footage still stays there. So we'll do it again. Highlight, and we'll drag them in. So we've imported those five video clips into our project for us to be able to use and edit and manipulate. When we've uh, imported our raw footage into our project, uh, what we need to do then is go to the edit interface. Now this is like our workbench. We're going to spend a lot of time here. This is where we drag the footage into our timeline. And then from that, it'll knit the videos together. And then we can make cuts in it and chop out all the bits that we don't want. And do loads of other bits and bobs. And, and over the next few episodes will sort of progress our project along to a an eventual final product. So what we need to do now is if we go to Media Pool, so here are our five videos, and we're going to insert them into our timeline. So what you can do is hold on to that clip, Drag it across, and then where it says insert, let go, and it brings it there. You can actually drag it directly onto the uh, onto the timeline itself. But it's good practice to do it this way with the insert method, because if you're wanting to add footage into the into uh, in between uh, some clips that you've got, then you would have to do it that way. It's the best way to do it that way. So it's good practice to, to just do it all like that. So clip two, insert. As you can see, clip two is not as long as clip one. Uh, above here is like um, is like a timer, and you can see there's various timestamps there. And it gives you a rough idea of how long your video is. And if you look up here, this is that three minutes thirty seven and. 0.37 of a second is how long your actual project video all knitted together uh, would run for basically so if I add another one in insert it adds another one and you see our time's gone up to 4 minutes 13 do all 5 the last one the last one was quite a long one you see it uh, so all those five uh, individual videos put on the same timeline, one after the other, would take 12 minutes, 6 seconds to, uh, to play from start to finish. So in effect, what we've actually done is taken five little clips, put them onto our timeline, it's knitted them together, and if we exported it at this point, it would export out as one large 12 minute MOV or MP4 file, which is pretty good. So that's where this episode ends. What we've done is we've gone to the website, downloaded the software, considered where we're going to put our raw footage as we go forward, opened up the uh, software after it's been installed, created a new project. Configured the project with the correct resolution and frame rate. We've imported our raw footage into the um, into the project, and then we dragged and inserted our project footage onto our timeline and created one big video from five small ones. In episode two, we're going to actually be looking at. Chopping our video up, 
and getting rid of all the bits that we don't want. And then what we're going to do is uh, add in some uh, transition effects. Uh, that's where uh, we put some effects in between uh, our video clips to make them a little bit more pleasant to look at when you go from one clip to the next. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and you found it useful, please give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And please leave a comment. The more comments I get, the better these videos will get and the more useful they will be to people. Thank you for watching. I'm Phil and this is Bite Size Guide. I'll see you next time.